Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft snapshot update video. It is 20W07A and I have great news. Some new renewable materials like quartz and obsidian thanks to the piglin, the new mob, which you can barter with to get materials, making them renewable. And we are going to have a proper look at the new piglin mob in this video. But first of all, i got to share this with you. If you bring them to the overworld, they start to shake and tremor. And then they turn into zombie pigmen. <laughs> That's hilarious. So while we look over the patch notes here, I have some additional information about biomes, beds and boats inside of the Never, straight from the mouth of the developers themselves. So stay tuned to the end of the video if you want to find out the fate of these things. But as you can see, a whole bunch of new features and the first thing we're going to check out is the Netherite Beacon. So I apologise if this is a little bit anticlimactic, but yes, the Netherite block works with the Beacon but no special features. You can see the GUI has been updated over here to support the netherite and you can use it to, you know, change the settings to whatever you want, but there are no additional perks. And you know what, I think Mo Yang have missed an opportunity here to do something really cool with this very expensive block. Otherwise, there is literally no reason you'd want to use the netherite block in a beacon. So this snapshot is all about the hoglin and the piglin. This one has been given some functionality and now we have a new mob that we can trade with. The only other mob to receive some changes is the Enderman. And if we have a look at these ones here, you'll see that they're now holding some new blocks. And that's because their loot tables have been updated. They are no longer going to be able to pick up Netherrack. However, they will be able to pick up the Crimson Fungi, Nylium, and Roots, and then the Warped equivalent of those three blocks. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the first of these two mobs, the Hoglin. Its natural spawning environment is the Crimson Forest, which is actually the same of the Piglin as well. So they spawn in the same environment together. Now they have an interesting aggressive behavior where they will only attack you if they have a line of sight with you, the player. So if you're standing behind glass, they're not going to attack you until there is a direct line of sight. Now if you break this line of sight and go behind a wall, behind the glass again, then they become unaggressive and just go back to their normal behavior. They are also a rather tough mob. They have double the health of a player, so they have 20 hearts, and they will attack for between three to four and a half hearts of damage when you are playing in hard mode. So they are a mob to be handled with care. Now, if you were to kill them, they simply drop leather and pork chops upon death. The leather is a little rarer. The pork chop is more common. Also, the baby hoglin is really cute and adorable. What I love about this mob is that it can barely do any damage to you. It does half a heart of damage, and sometimes when it attacks you, it doesn't even do any damage at all. Now, there is a way to keep an aggressive hoglin at bay. That is to simply be near a warped fungi. This has a repellent effect on the mob that seems to be about a radius of 12 blocks from where it's placed. If you hold it in your hand, it's not as effective, but if you place one down on the ground, it'll cause the hick hoglin to flee and to no longer be aggressive. Now, it's the crimson fungi that you use to breed these mobs together. So let's go ahead and do that. You would have to do this while they're aggressive, but then they're still aggressive while they're breeding, which is just crazy. I've also given myself resistance so that I can stay alive here. But yes, this is how they breed, and eventually they should make a baby. Ah, and there we go. <laughs> There's the little guy. So yeah, breeding hoglins is going to be a dangerous activity, and there's probably not much reward for it, considering they drop leather and pork chops, so I doubt anyone's going to be doing this anytime soon. Now, according to the patch notes, hoglins will sometimes get hunted down by piglins. However, they are apparently an ecosystem. They live together side by side. And actually, we're going to see it in action here, which is fantastic. Now, they only start to hunt the hoglin when they go hungry. And as you can see, they also hunt in packs. Now, I've been waiting around for a while here, spawning them in, and not actually seen that happen before. So sometimes they're in harmony, but when the piglin get hungry, they will go after the hoglins. It also says that baby hoglin and piglin will play together. This is about the most of that that I've seen. They just seem to stand near one another and look at each other, which is cute and adorable. And also, you don't have to fear the baby piglin because they don't attack you, the player. 
And just to show you that, here I am in survival. You can see the picklins. Oh, they're cute and adorable, but they don't attack me. Okay, it's time for a closer look at the piglin. And why isn't it being aggressive towards me? You're about to find out. But anyway, I'm just going to say, if you're enjoying the video and you're not subscribed, then make sure to do that and catch these snapshot update videos when they come out. So why is the piglin not aggressive to me right now? It's because they love gold. As you can see, some of them actually spawn with gold armor. They can also carry gold swords and then sometimes they spawn with crossbows as well. Now if you are wearing pieces of gold armor, you will blend in and they will not become aggressive. So let's see how much gold armor it actually takes. I haven't done this before. We're doing it together live. Okay, maybe just one piece? Is that all it takes? One piece of armor? Okay, now they're coming after me. No, I changed my mind. <laughs> you could just put it straight back on. That's amazing. I like this. Now, the patch notes describes the piglins as an aggressive civilization that live in the nether and that they mostly hang around in these crimson forests. However, they can also spawn in the nether wastes, which is the original nether biome. And after some investigation, I found out that they had eight hearts of health. So they're a little bit weaker than other mobs. As you can see, though, they like to run away from zombie pigmen, which are currently being referred to as zombie piglins. However, they haven't changed their name inside of the game yet. So the zombie pigmen might be renamed to a zombified piglin in the future. But yes, as you can see here, the piglins are not so keen and uh, they run away from these ones. Now we've already seen this, but I want to see the behavior again. The piglin attack in groups, so once one of them is after you, they kind of crowd together like this and then attack in a group. Although it seems like they're trying to decide between me and the hoglin at the moment. So yes, here we go. I'm going to be ambushed by these piglin now. Ha! There we go. I got one of these skeletons to accidentally attack a piglin. And now the piglins are going after the skeletons instead. So they can be aggressive at more mobs than just the player and the hoglin. Now there is a mob that they are known for not getting along with, and that is the wither skeleton. So I'm going to plop one down over here and see what happens. Are they going to go after it? Yes. Look at that. They attack wither skeletons. It kind of looks like the wither skeleton didn't attack back that time. Oh no. Yep, they definitely attack back. So this piglin is a special piglin. It is holding an enchanted sword that has looting level, I don't know, 9,000 on it? <laughs> and I want to put it in here with a wither skeleton. Seems like it takes a while to notice the guy. But will it drop a wither skeleton skull? There we go. So the looting effect worked. I can see that there are bones and coal. But did we get a skull? Well, from that test we didn't. Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to save this one for an episode of myth busting. Look, that guy's in there. It don't matter how many wither skeletons are around him. Seems like he's pretty slow to realize they're there. Now, the piglin have even more interesting attributes. It says that they will be distracted by gold items. And that was the bartering feature that we're about to see in a moment. And look at it. This guy loves it. He loves his gold ingot. Now, I was wondering, would they go for some of these other items as well? Yep, they like golden apples. They probably love notch apples, and I'm gonna guess they're a fan of golden carrots. Yep, they will they will take that golden carrot away. Now you might have guessed it, I'm wearing my gold armor. However, if I mine a gold block, this will make him aggressive. Bad idea. Another thing you can do to upset these creatures is simply open a chest. And once again, they're aggressive at me. Now, I've just learned a couple of things. When they pick up items, they can ditch their weapons, which is possibly a way to pacify them. And then when they die, they also drop those gold items that they're holding back onto the ground. Now, that will even work after you've bartered with them. So this guy has given me a crimson fungi. And then I kill him. And I get the gold ingot back. Very cruel. So what's left? It's just the bartering system, which we've already seen in action. We throw a gold ingot at the zombie piglin and they throw something back in return. Now you might know it's possible to make a very powerful gold farm in this game using zombie pigmen and you can automate the creation of gold ingots. Then you could simply do something like this. Feed it to the pigmen 
and then have some hoppers pick up the items that they throw back. No player interaction involved here at all. And the piglin, like, don't have a GUI. You can't interact with them. You just simply throw them gold and you'll get something back at random. So after about 10 to 15 minutes, this is what I've gotten in return. Now, I've had a look at the loot table. And the way the loot table works is it divides it into three categories. This one has a weight of one, a weight of two, five, and ten. I said three categories, it was four. The higher the weight, the more likely you are to get it. Now, they've got an equal chance inside of this group. They've all got a weight of ten, and then you get a random amount of those items. So between one and four for the mushrooms, three and eight for the flint, and four to twelve for rotted flesh. But I'm not going to go through each of these individually. I'm just going to hang over here, and you can pause the screen if you want to look at all the numbers. I will comment on one or two of them. For example, gravel over here. This makes gravel renewable. You don't have to extract it from the world and damage the environment. And yes, it'd be very grindy to get a lot of it. Also, the same could be said of soul sand as well. Then over here, some more valuable items in the weight 2 category. And in weight 1, farmable obsidian and farmable quartz. Also, I have no idea why warped nilium is in here, but it is. But yes, that means renewable quartz, renewable obsidian. Now, the catch is that you're going to get hardly any of it. I mean, I've got none so far, so it's technically renewable, but you'd need to set up a really large-scale farm to get a lot of these materials. And so that is everything to know about the Hoglin and the Piglin for now. I'll also mention that they are included in the Monsters Hunted and Monster Hunter achievement as well. Nice to see Moyang getting on top of that. Before we talk about their plans for the future of this update, I'd also just like to point out a couple of things. So first of all, soul lanterns and fire torches now attached to walls, and so will string like they did before. Of course, the changes they made to walls seems to have disrupted that. The lantern was also not animated, so now the soul lantern is animated like the regular lantern is. And also, an observation I made is that the new types of fence posts don't attach to the old types, and I also learned that the blue fire doesn't spread. So this was, of course, introduced in the last snapshot. Just keeping you informed with everything that I'm learning. So thanks to this live stream from the developers of the game themselves on the official Minecraft channel, I've learned some other things about their plans for 1.16. And we're going to go through them one by one. So first of all, beds, according to the developers, will still explode in the nether. They hinted at it maybe having other functionality at Minecon, but having fought it all through now, they've decided to just keep it how it is. The really sad news is that we've seen all of the new biomes. Apparently, there are going to be no new ones added. This is it, just three new biomes, which I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed about. Again, at Minecon, they said that there would be more, but maybe they took their time working on the biomes they had then and didn't have time for another one. Who knows? Now, they also answered questions from the chat, and there was someone asking about nether boats. Quite a few people have been floating this idea that perhaps the new fire resistant wood could be used as boats in the nether. Well, they suggested that you simply upvote it on the feedback website, and there is actually going to be a link to this in the description box down below if you want to go and upvote this post because they said they decided to work on the nether update because it was the most voted one on the website and currently the most voted one right here is the cave update so use the feedback website to tell Moyang what you want and who knows this could mean that the next update might be a cave update for Minecraft now given that this was a casual live stream with the Moyang developers Maybe not everything they say is an official statement, so who knows, some of those things could be subject to change. Another thing they hinted at as well was no new enchantments in this 1.16 update. And I can't help but feel that we may have actually seen most of the content for this update in the first two snapshots, but of course I'm going to keep my ear to the ground and continue to cover these snapshots on this channel. So we're going to get into the bug fixes next. I also forgot to mention that Soul Soil will work for spawning a wither, as you can see right here. Anyways, let's get to those bugs. I'm in 1.15.2 right now to show you how this used to look. So mushrooms, for some reason, appearing as green dots on the map. Now all of these are infested stone blocks, which means they've got silverfish inside of them. And if you blow these up with TNT, no silverfish will spawn, which has been considered a bug. Here in 1.16, our mushrooms are back to normal, 
And there's our silverfish from a TNT explosion. Now if you saw the last snapshot, you'll know that we discovered items are not burning in fire. That one's been taken care of. Also, if you're on a multiplayer server, any player can walk up to a dog and change its sitting status. This has been considered a bug. Only the owner of the dog, like myself, will be able to do that now. Also, if you were to take a renamed book and enchant it, you would lose the name of the book. But here in 1.16, you're going to keep the name. So, I'm bouncing on a slime block. Why is this significant? Well, something to do with the timing and the way this was done previously meant that you wouldn't actually get bounced up when on a slime block like this. So that's a fix right there. Uh, another one in this update is placing armor stands on top of fence posts. Now, because of their hitbox, those armor stands would usually just fall down inside of the block and that is no longer going to happen. They actually sit right on top of it, which kind of looks like they're floating. And I like that. Now we're in a snowy environment as there's been a few changes to snow golems. So first of all, if you're to carve it with some shears, or sorry, shear its head off, <laughs> it makes a sound and drops the carved pumpkin, which it wasn't doing before. Another bug with its sound, if it attacks another mob, which it's doing right there, it's now actually playing the snowball sound as opposed to the arrow sound, which it was doing before. They were also erroneously taking damage when it would snow inside of a snowy biome. Obviously that makes no sense, that one's been patched as well. And so my friends, that brings us to the end of this snapshot video. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like, it supports the channel. As always, I thank you for doing that. And if you didn't see last week's snapshot video, then you've got to check it out. It was a huge hit here on the channel. And I can't thank you all enough for supporting me, uh, helping me do what I do right here, covering these snapshots. I very much enjoy it. And I really like the new mobs. The Hoglin and the Picklin are pretty cool. What do you think of them? Let me know with a comment down below. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.